Well guys, we're on our way to Japan, Trail Hero. This is going to be absolutely nuts. Let's go jump on a plane. We're catching up with a few mates, Darren from Carbon. <laughs> when we get to Tokyo, it's gonna be crazy. This video is brought to you by Jackery, Carbon, and Eco X Gear. We're in the taxi now, two hour drive, we get up tomorrow and hit Nara Trial Mountain for a little bit of off road action. <laughs> We're a little ways out of the city of Nara. We've come all the way from Australia for one reason. Cars. Specifically, rock crawlers. These crazy looking weapons come in all different shapes and sizes. Some take the shape of cars we see on the streets, whilst others look like they were engineered by NASA. They are called moon buggies after all. All these vehicles and their drivers have flown in from America and across Japan for one reason. Trail Hero Japan 2023. You want me to actually say welcome to Trail Hero Japan or? Okay. So you have it framed up? So it's good? <laughs> welcome to Trail Hero Japan. We are here in Nara. It's a trail mountain owned by the Tsuda Racing. I've seen Trail Hero in the US before. Really, really cool. There's some awesome Suzuki's here, some awesome buggies, some really good wheeling. My name is Rich Klein, president of Trail Hero internationally. The purpose of Trail Hero is to raise awareness for people who need motorized access, whether that's people with special needs or veterans. I'm Brandy, quite the drink. I'm here with Team America. We brought over six drivers, six vehicles. My name is Clay Brown. I'm from Dallas, Texas. The car that I have now is a 1977 Bronco. I bought it in 2010, so it's 13 years that I've had the car. It's a 92 inch wheelbase when it came straight from Ford, but now it's a 106 wheelbase. We brought a very young driver. His name's Charlie Mushner Jr. All the way out here from New York, competing with his father. The moon buggies used in Japan is very, very different than I see in Australia there. I brought out Moonshine. I've named this rig. It's a moon buggy. It's turbocharged, portals all copper plated. It actually has some really new stuff on it. The front wheels spin faster than the rear, a reverser box, so you get the torque twist down. And suspension actually raises and lowers. It's really cool. I'm excited for Craig Allen. It's a great car, a lot of horsepower, big parts, really cool car. Greg Higgs brought his son, Lucas, and this is his first time spotting for a competition. Marco Brassanini caps off the American team with his Blue 7 Rock Crawler. Now that we've gotten familiar with the American team, our Japanese hosts have a surprise for us all. American style, it's a barbecue. My hobby is barbecue. I'm barbecue master. One of the things that the Americans love when we come to Japan is all the Wagyu you can eat. I cook 10 kilos Wagyu for this time. Now that the rock crawlers are warmed up and the drivers are fueled, we're all set to hit the trails and let the blood start pumping. Three, two, one. Well guys, the event is officially open. We're here, we've got the rocks, we've got the vehicles ready, the teams are all set to go. So how about we get some tires onto the rocks and see how we go for Trail Hero Japan. This is so exciting guys, these are all the Japanese cars. And these are the US vehicles, all set to compete. So 
The Americans have gone to huge expense to get all these vehicles here, but my favorite is this Bronco. I'm so envious, guys. How awesome would it be to pack up a full-bodied rig from wherever you live and bring it here to Japan to do some wheeling? This is crazy, and I can't wait to see this being wheeled on those rocks. Here are the rules. The competitor with the least amount of points wins. Competitors must all go through the gates. I put three gates each in the course and one bonus. Every car goes through on the same direction. If the car goes through the gate, minus one point. If they make it through the bonus gate, it's minus 10 points. If the car touches the cone, 10 points. Backup is one point. There are two classes at this event, unlimited and mod stock. Unlimited allows for rear steer and typically means a completely custom single-seater moon buggy. Mod stock vehicles must resemble normal cars. That means taking a consumer car and modifying it. Spotter straps can be used but accrue a 10-point penalty in either class. Couldn't exit the course, 80 points. Finally, if the drivers get stuck, there is a special recovery vehicle just in case. Royce Point is winner. When we come to these international events, we are just so limited on the equipment we can carry. This is the Jackery 100. It's not available in Australia yet, hopefully sometime very, very soon. But this is the largest power bank you're actually allowed to take on an aeroplane. So we've brought this with us. Now, we've got a slow charge in the drone batteries here, but if we put the battery into the drone, we can actually fast charge it. So the little 100 water is doing a cracking job while we're out there on the rocks getting the action for you guys. Thanks, Jackery. Now that's enough about charging. Let's get back to the rocks. A lot of the Americans are used to drier terrain and not so many boulders. The guys are experiencing a new terrain. It's slippery, it's wet. They're saying it's a challenge. It's a big challenge for them. Track one's got 80 trucks worth of rocks and it's all concreted over the top, so it's a little bit man-made. The concrete means this course has a fair amount of grip. However, it makes up for that with its topography. This track features a steep entry and a bowl in the middle, throwing the whole course off camber. After conquering the first gate, the drivers have to cross the bowl and climb up the other side. Drivers can then try and line themselves up for the bonus gate, which is another tricky climb, and hightail it to the third gate and onto the exit, whilst being careful not to hit any cones. How is it? That was fun. I had no control. No, no idea what I was doing in there. It was fun. I knew I was going to take some cones because I'm wide, so it'd just be fun to just smash them and get through. Track two. Three, two, one, it's go! With the lack of concrete on this track, the potential to get stuck has increased dramatically. The first gate is narrow with a large rock. It's off camber, technical, and definitely pushed some of the teams to the limit. Gate two features large, loose boulders that can be tricky to climb as they move freely. Competitors can tackle the bonus gate set on top of a mound of rocks. But if time is running short, it's a quick run for the exit gate. Track three. Looks can be deceiving with this course. Although a smaller track than the last two, this course features nasty crevices that make it easy to get hung up. Drivers will need to complete one lap with a slight deviation for those brave enough to risk their diffs on the bonus gate. Thank you. The final track for the first day sees the unlimited class battling it out on the rocks. The course begins with an off-camber, diff-breaking step up that demands a lot of grunt. The main section of the track is filled with boulders of all sizes, making navigation tough. Distinct advantage goes to those who have rear steer and spotters who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. The spotters are working really hard. They've got ski ropes holding the cars upright. They're pulling them off of obstacles, just hauling and hauling. Trail Hero is all about getting up close and personal with rock crawling. And one very special person got a first-hand experience. 
I got on to Greg's car and that was my first time to participate in this rope race. The car, just machine went over. So I was just screaming out there. And you kind of scared me, right? Oh, we both. Oh, yeah. yeah. kind of scared me, too. <laughs> Nothing like this in the world. <laughs> Trail Heroes is just so exciting. That brings a close to competition of the first day of Trail Hero Japan. But the festivities don't stop there. So let's cross over to the Offsite Expo with plenty of surprises. It was fun seeing all the different media there, all the different government officials there, all very excited to be part of this event. We all got up on stage, the top drivers in the world were up there, getting a chance to see everyone, and I think it's just one big event that we're happy to be a part of. There is so much to see and do at the Expo, with vendors, enthusiasts, off-road creations, and an endless run of 4x4 Suzuki's. There are Suzuki's everywhere, but we have found something that's Suzuki, but a whole lot different. This is like a Suzuki carry, but it has been kitted out with, I believe, Suzuki Sierra differentials. These are normally an IFS at the moment from factory, but this one has the solid front axle. It's a whole aftermarket chassis replacement down here that bolts into the original mounting points. It's got the trailing arms, leading arms, sets up all the suspension. You've got some long slinky coils to get all this height, but I would like to see this on the tracks. So I reckon it'll work really well. Japan, love it. It's not just about the vehicles. It's great to meet the locals and also bump into some of our friends from back home. I'm here to see you know, Japan for drive the people and also at the introduction of the, our new sound bus. The sound extreme elite, but also at working with the LED whips and also LED strips. There is interest in Japan market. A lot of the Jimny's small cars in Japan and they love to see better audio and also at the lighting. After having a walk around, it was time for the main event, swapping out the four-wheel drives for some smoky wheel-spinning action. I brought four D1 top driver for this drifting exhibition. They are very, very famous in Japan. Mr. Keiichi Tsuchiya is the most famous guy in drifting society. He is the best of the king of the king. I got the photo there. So finally, he came here and he is now judging. I've seen it only on TV, so it's cool to be actually here in Japan where they don't really allow drifting and seeing them perform and do their thing. Insane. The speed is so high, and I was so skilled out there. Indeed it was, but for now, it was time to turn our attention to the final day of Trail Hero, the infamous Trail Breaker Challenge. Trail Breaker is the best drivers in the world on an untamed trail never been accomplished. Nobody's ever driven it before, and we're gonna go out there and finish that trail. As the second day of Trail Hero Japan begins, it's time for Trail Breaker, a never before driven, untested, unproven track. Contestants must follow the path down the boulders, up through the flowing waterfall, then exiting the chopped up muddy climb. The faster the time, the better. Let's see how the teams go. The course is wet, not a lot of traction on the tires. I'm sure some of the guys are gonna do some fun stuff in there. One of the Japanese drivers misjudged as he was driving in the first gate and he sat there for ages, spinning and spinning, working his rear steer, almost shuffling off but not quite there. 
One of the guys who's driving the Bronco from America pulled his winch out, hauled him back out. True to form, my plan is to just hammer it down. Let her eat. I definitely had itchy pedal feet watching those guys. I'm always looking at the lines, looking at the cars and thinking, hmm, I can do that better or I can do it this way. As the last car was finishing, it started to pour with rain. This was going to make it tougher and far more difficult for the second half, the final leg of the Trail Breaker event. The second half of Trail Breaker incorporated a steep climb. There were three gates to be passed, one at a time with the competitors having to loop back in between each gate, re-climb the slippery hill to tackle the higher gate. With each gate getting harder, the teams were really pushed to the test on this stage. It's a balance of being super technical with being fast, which makes for this anxious competition. At this point, this large vehicle was struggling to get through gate one and found itself caught on one of the trees. With a little bit of tree loving, it was able to make its way around, but the driver and the crowd held their breath as the vehicle was about to flip. A lucky save found him back on course though and ready for the next gate, which was going to prove to be a little bit tougher. Tube frame, racing seats and harnesses ensure the driver was perfectly safe. America! <laughs> Greg Higgs from the USA struggled at the first gate. Becoming hung up on a tree, Darn it! Just got too overzealous, caught the tree, and now I broke the front U joint. We had to winch the front of the car up. Pretty tricky, the position it was in. Ended up having to reverse back down the hill, which was creepy. Got himself down. With consistent drizzle and more traffic over the steep climb, the final stage was proving to be more and more difficult. Sometimes you have traction, sometimes you don't. I thought it'd just go right up, but I had a little issue there. And then I'm like, man, I'll just stay here for the next 15 minutes and hopefully we can smoke some tires. It was too wet and then it finally went. With Trail Hero and Trail Breaker Japan all said and done, it was time for the award ceremony where the winners would be announced. The unlimited class winners were... Greg Higgins. And the overall winner was Craig Allen. He did amazing winning that event. He's really stoked because now he doesn't have to qualify anymore for Trailbreaker in the States. Definitely want to thank the government for all the support that they have given us for the Trail Hero Japan event. Without their support, as well as the locals, none of this would be possible. <laughs> thank you for sharing your world with us. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm wanting to bring a car. I'm hoping to talk some mates into bringing cars as well. <laughs> and with that, we wrap up our Trail Hero Japan adventure. It's been a blast with rocks, mud, and plenty of friendly faces. We can't wait to be back for next year.